So today's session is on what I've been asked to do is on body image and self-esteem. And I think everybody at some time in their life goes through this, goes through with um, being conscious of how they look, how they feel about themselves, and maybe experiencing low self-esteem. So what I wanted to start with, rather than myself just come out and give you a lecture, normally the way I work is in a group setting and on a one-to-one -one basis. So the clients or the students who's with me will tell me what's going on for them. So this is where I'm asking you guys, what does bo body image mean to you? So I gather you're going to do the message on the chat. What does body image mean to you? How you view yourself? your own feelings of self-worth, okay? And is there anything you want to share about how you do view yourself? Or we can do that later. So that's open to that, okay? Um, anyone else about what does body image mean to you? Because it could mean different things to different people. It doesn't mean it's a set concept, just one doesn't fit all. And this is when it comes to mind. Mind doesn't work like that because it's from our own experience, what gets stored in a subconscious from the day we were born to the day we are here today. So everything gets stored like in a hard drive. And that's what actually creates our values and beliefs and what we learn about who we are and what we learn to believe about other people as well. So body image, body image can be translated by, um, as one of the viewers said, is how we think about ourselves. So it's about what do you think about you? What do you really think about yourself? And then our thinking relates to how we feel about ourselves. So how do we feel? about ourselves, about our body, and how we believe others see us. It could be from judgments from others. I've got here judgment according to external standards, example in media and in our environment, yes. But that's true, but um, mainly, you know, what is body image? What it's what is it? It's about what we think about ourselves. Your body image to you is going to be completely different to how we feel about ourselves. How I feel about me is going to be completely different from how you feel about you. How we believe others see us. And do we know that for a fact how people see us? Do we know that for a fact? Are we just making up those stories in our head? Or is it because of somebody had a comment to made and that comment, you've made it into something else and it might not even be true. Maybe they mean something else. We don't know this yet until we get into it. And it, uh, so I've got a comment coming through. It's quite, it's mentally draining comparing ourselves to others. Of course it is. Of course it is. It is draining because it's all going on in your head. It's going all in your mind. And what you're thinking which mentally is the thoughts create your feelings. So where you're just saying is you feel quite drained, right? That's a feeling. And it's a form your thoughts that you will get those feelings. So how do we think about ourselves? What's the things that people say about themselves? So this is just a few examples. How we think about ourselves, we might say, you you think you're fat. Maybe when you look in the mirror, when you try something on in clothes, 
you're overweight because you're not maybe not the size is it in uh, as a model walking past it was a I think it's a size six or an eight in the magazines um and when you look at your clothes size or even clothes sizes within the shops the different shops have different sizes that you might be a 12 in one shop and might be a 14 in another and when you pick up that item of say jeans or a dress and you think you know my god that's a size 14 but I was a size 12 just well I don't know two months ago or something and then you start thinking it's just all these thoughts start going through your head when you look in the mirror or you compare yourself to others it might be you might think you're ugly and what does that mean for you what is ugly what what ugly is, is what's that comparison to and then islamically can we be ugly Allah's created us perfectly. Now, the things we might think about ourselves is too short or not tall enough or too tall, can't wear heels. Some people talk about um, how they don't say, I think this about me, but they just say, this is, I have bad skin. I have too many spots. Or look at all this pigmentation on my face. You know, they, everything is turned into a fact. Too skinny. I mean, I've started off with fat and overweight, but then there's people out there that um, say they're too skinny, they're too skinny, they don't have any shape on them, um, they can't even look nice in a dress um, or in this jeans or if it's... Um, I don't know if there's any men on the call uh, on the session today. If there is, please do let me know so it doesn't. It's related to everybody, but um, mostly in I'm seeing dress and jeans. People feel they don't if it, they're too skinny, they're just falling off them. They don't have the hips for it. You know, all these things we're thinking about ourselves, and and I've only picked a very few. I'm sure you guys can give me some more here because this is meant to be interactive. So do please feel free at any time just to send your messages through and I'll relate them to the presentation. But all these things where you're looking about thinking about yourself, is it, aren't they negative already? Yes, they're negative. And then, as I said, thoughts create feelings. So the feelings are a got to do with these thoughts. So then you feel we feel sad when we're trying to lose that weight, when we're fat or overweight, or we, when we think we're fat and we think we're overweight. So we start doing the diets or we start doing um, cutting down meals. Uh, whatever we're doing, we try to make this effort to maybe um, reduce the calories or reduce what we're eating as the junk food to shift that weight. And then we get sad when we stand on the scales. Um, or sad those jeans still don't kind of fit as nicely because you've not shifted that weight that you were looking at that's bothering you then you begin to feel unhappy unhappy is the feeling within yourself and you're thinking it's because of my body shape this body you own this amanat that's been given to you by Allah and it's amanat it's only for this time and this earth and the, this the dunya for you to look after and what do you think happens to it when you have all these negative thoughts and negative feelings regarding your your body? What do you think happens with that? Okay, I'll wait to see what what messages we get through. And gratitude. We're negative towards our bodies. Yeah, but why are we negative about our bodies? Let's come back to that. Why are we very negative towards our bodies? So feeling less than perfect in size. In size, what is the right size? Who says that's that size? Who says size six? I don't even know, you know, what is size six really? It's a kid's, sometimes it looks like a kid's size, but if somebody fits in, if their bone structure fits into a size six, might might work for them. But why is that the perfect size or why is size eight or ten the perfect size and then we all strive when you're saying we're comparing ourselves yes the media exactly we see it everywhere but then you see it but you if you're seeing it everywhere that um that's the perfect size yes it's training your brain we get learned those behaviors that 
this is the perfect. We start telling ourselves, we start believing it. And then what we do is just, if any, if we are not that size, eight to 10, the perfect size, then we just beat ourselves up. Mentally, we beat ourselves up. So then because of that, we start feeling not good enough. I'm not good enough because I don't fit into that size. I don't look like that magazine. Or nowadays it's the Instagram or the Facebook or the Snapchat now with all the filters. Everybody looks perfect with filters. Who doesn't? Clear skin, gorgeous eyes. And the, the Snapchat filters in Apple only recently um, discovered Snapchat. Um, so the Snapchat, uh, you know, you get makeup put on and the change of face shape or, you know, funny things. But it could be OK if it is a laugh. You know, you're doing it for fun. But if that's covering up how you really feel about yourself, that's still internal. You're feeling not good enough. That's something that needs to be addressed. Then you start feeling unworthy, unworthy of love, unworthy of um, acceptance, unworthy of self-care, self-love, unworthy of being who you are. And then that brings you down even more. Then you start feeling unattractive. What is attractive? What does attractive mean? Mean to you? Do we have a set right or wrong? What is attractive? No, what's attractive to me might not be attractive to you. What's attractive to you might not be attractive to me. It's all individual. But what really makes you attractive is your nur, is your in inside, your you is your beauty from within. But we sometimes forget that. Or a lot of the times we forget that and we forget it because of the society and the community or uh, in the environment we actually live in. Another thing we've got about body image, what, what body image means is how we believe others see us. We don't know by fact that others see us like this, but because here I've got here, these beliefs can be what we think of ourselves. So if you go back to the first column here, if we think we're fat, we think we're ugly. We think we're too short. We think we've got bad skin. We think we're too skinny. Or, well, we think that these beliefs, because we end up believing that, we're thinking that's what other people think of us. That's the way they're seeing us. Now, I don't want to go to that party now because I, I don't look that great in this dress or this outfit. And it's like, well, everybody's going to think I look fat. Everybody's going to think it's, you know. I don't know, I keep coming up with fat. If that one doesn't work with you guys, you just send it through for me. I've never had the issue of being too skinny. Okay. However, this belief about how we see, uh, how we believe other people see us. Another area is here. These beliefs can be constructed by what others say about us. You know, it could be family, growing up with family um, or with friends or students. Do, what do your friends and your students say to you? You know, it might be just small comments, but what do they mean? So at this point, if you can put in some messages there about what do you hear from others? What about school? What about in school when you were, like, you know, in primary school and high school? I know you guys are at university now. So, however, that doesn't take that doesn't take it out the scenario of what was said to you as growing up in your household, even from zero to five, five to ten. You know, while well, you're at primary school and then when the the um, when your big transition for you, when you're leaving primary to go to high school. That is huge when you're the smaller kind of the smallest people there because you're in first year and when you're in first year or even at primary school, you know, there's a lot of bullying going on at school and the bullying becomes verbal abuse. And what is the taunts that they say? Maybe you were. Maybe you were in the back end of that. Maybe getting the taunts with even with these things where we're saying you're fat, you're ugly. Um, this could be racial taunts, etc. as well. These things you start storing all in your subconscious. And this, even when you today, you don't really realize why you behave a certain way consciously. Subconsciously, it's all stored. Subconsciously, it's all stored there. So even within family, and my, as my cousins, um, I was discussing this when I was doing the um, 
the information for this webinar. And I remember my cousins, like we were like one of one of, one of us in each family was just by fun or by um by love you just called fatty fatty come here fatty whatever how they ever they say it, they call them fatty but when you look at the pictures and you look at them and you're thinking oh my god they were nowhere near fat but maybe uh, you know they say that they call them out of fondness but be, just because my cousin this cousin on this side was the less thinner than her sisters and her brothers and then the same with the other one it was just because she was less thinner but she was still really thin she was nowhere near fat but they have then they've grown up with this self image of being fat no no matter what they still feel fat and actually one of them is a size 8 the other one must be a maximum of size 10 even if she is a, if she is that she did a size 8 and till this day she's like saying oh my tummy is out to there I've got fat where does that come from where does that come from it's because I remember those days that they were just called that just for fun and that is not even the bullying at school or taunting by anybody else or even your friends this was family because you're being in that family on a daily basis is anybody out there relating to what I've said so far is this is this is this what has happened to you okay so yes a lot of adult insecurities do with body image but do you mean that for yourself your adult insecurities has got to do with that are you meaning yes that, but are you meaning that yeah you're understanding what I'm saying or you, you're saying for yourself because it would be good to know and that way I can address for yourself okay great so this is where this point is this next slide I'll, I'll address everything as I go along and don't worry at the end I'll give you I'll give you contact details as well because the work I do is working individually with and um, people who and we can go back to that time or that area in your subconscious mind because it's all stored in your your brain your mind um alhamdulillah it's such an incredible place of how it can store and create things for you but unfortunately it can do all the negatives for you too so look at the next slide here other than the absolutely gorgeous cute baby here you know we were all like that one day so innocent carefree we weren't born with these. We weren't born with self-esteem issues. We weren't born with worrying about body image. Where did it come from? Where did it come from? Just look at that picture. That's a sweet baby. This is how we were. We were born like this. We grew, Then we grew up. And growing up within that environment, growing up with that negative self-talk growing up with what people have said to us what we're seeing in the tvs what we're seeing in adverts what we're seeing in the billboards what we see in social media what we see in magazines all that starts creating our values and our belief systems but if you look back really this is where we started this is where we started. So they're all learned behaviours. They're all learned values and belief systems. And they get stored in our subconscious mind. And with storing them in our subconscious mind, that's how they impact into the feelings and how we're going to do, our, how we think, and then our behaviours and our actions. But really, body image, real body image has nothing nothing at all to do with your size can you believe that body image is nothing to do with your size and your shape right now this moment how do you feel about your body how do you feel about your size and your shape from one to ten right or zero to ten ten being amazing awesome feel great 
one being not so much, not good at all. So feel free to put, put your comments through. Okay, a four. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, sure. I'll repeat that. How do you feel about your body just now? Your body image. So ten is you feel great. At the high the higher scale, number ten is I feel great, I feel awesome, I feel amazing, I feel fabulous. Um one is you feel the opposite not great at all about it it changes okay right now right now today how do you feel about it where are you with it just now okay sometimes six and sometimes two okay we'll come back to that and we'll look at what changes that why do you feel sometimes six which is above five so it's coming closer to the 10 which is more positive but two is very low okay and the other comment was four and do you feel is it normally four all the time you feel like that or does it change for you okay pretty stable OK, so we've got a four and then we've got a between a six and a two. OK, and if anybody else wants to jump on seeing how they are. OK, three to five. OK, I'll just get them in. OK, so that's interesting, isn't it? And have you thought about it that way before? It's taking that moment to stop. And consider how you feel about yourself. So body image hasn't got anything to do with your size or your shape. It's actually a product of peer pressure, of social concepts, of cultural values and family values. I'm not sure uh, what the cultural um, background of the audience is here, but growing up in a Pakistani environment, um, and I'll give you an example of when people were looking at prospective marriage partners and what I've heard and what I've seen with my friends and particularly even with myself when we were getting married you know the, it was when you were get I know I know it's changed by the time when I was going through all this um but it was very traditional that um the the males mum would call the house and the cultural values of the ladies or the cultural values of that this community was um they wanted to know the size of the girl whether she was tall whether she was fierce skinned you know everything was got to do with looks so your body image but this is not just the teenagers or the kids this is adults is the adults is the community is the culture is the families that are having that pressure so never mind just peer pressure, it's pressure from them that are you good enough to um, to be even considered as a proposal for and within the family as in marriage? You know, where they're saying, are, is, is the girl A, B, C? OK, whether it's fair skin, tall, slim, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But you can see it happens daily. It happens all the time. It's all around us all the time. And because of these values, this starts beginning to influence our self-perception, how we think of ourselves and how we feel about ourselves, our self-worth, our self-esteem. And what do you think that happens with this? Okay, it drops and then it drops and it drops. If all the all the influence you're getting is all negative and it's all on just the way you look then it does begin to start putting you in a dark place and feeling like you're unworthy, feeling like you're not good enough, feeling like you're not pretty enough to get out there. You start feeling pretty rubbish about yourself, which leads to then depression.
So these negative influences that are, I can't even see my screen. Uh, negative influences. Look at the. I've just put a range of people, you know, youngsters, adults, like siblings. These negative influ influences. That's what allows our lack of confidence. If we're already feeling low in confidence or low self-esteem, this makes it fester. It just takes it deeper and deeper into the dark hole. And and if it's constant negative, if you're not getting positive in it, if you're not getting anything better out of it, how is it going to get better for you? How are you going to start feeling more confident? How are you going to start feeling high self-esteem, feeling good about yourself? Would you like at this point to say what your negative influences are? So as I've given you some examples of negative influences of within family, within cultural, within even school, being bullied. Is there anything that you would like to share? You can feel free to do the messages and I'll go on to my case study. Overly honest, friends. <laughs> I'll come back to that one. So this case study, I was just talking to one of my friends and he um, I was saying, you know, when you're growing up, when you were growing up, what issues did you have at high school, primary or high school? Um, was there anything that affected, knocked your self-esteem, etc.? And he goes, I was bullied. I goes, what were you bullied for? And he's saying he was bullied and he was called Bugsy. That's a first picture there, what's with the teeth? Bugsy, because he had big teeth or unlined teeth and he had to wear braces later, but Bugsy Malone or something, he said, and it was about his teeth. The other thing name calling was Concord. It was called Concord, just made about, and that's about his nose. But then again, this is the nose Allah has given you. If we appreciate or, or understand that there's a reason why we're designed this way, Allah has created us perfectly. You know, no, no one person is the same. Nobody's got the same finger um, fingertip prints because we're all unique. Yeah. So all these little things about facial, um, even even the next one was Becky Four Eyes being called that. You know, that these little things, they're not little at that time, though, is it? When you're at primary school, this is at primary school up to high school, he was saying this was happening to him. You know, and I said, how, what, what did it do for you? What, how was the results of this? And he said, it was really, I was really insecure about myself. I start feeling really insecure. And then he goes, I was scared. And I goes, what were you scared of? And he goes, for anybody, just even a gang of boys just jumping me. You know, I, I, if I'm walking across the road and or walking in the street and I see a, a bunch of boys, I would cross the road cross the road to get away from them, even if they've not said anything. He was that insecure with himself because of all these taunts that it created this another level of fear, fear of getting beat up. So he used to cross the road. And then the hard thing hit, hit home. Okay, this, all this stuff knocks your self-esteem. Yes, but he said hatred. He goes, what hatred for these people? that were do, saying these things to you, he goes, hatred of myself, hatred of myself. And that's that's scary to hear. If someone really hates themselves, what does that result to? Hating yourself? These are the things we're hearing nowadays with youngsters, teenagers, due to Instagram, due to bullying, that unfortunately people are taking their lives. Unfortunately, they're committing suicide due to bullying. But bullying is the outer product. It's what the bullying is doing internally. Okay, this is your, your part, guys. I think I've talked enough. Can you share your negative influences? So we've got here overly honest friends. So what are these over the honest friends saying? What kind of things are they saying? We've got Instagram. But I suppose they're negative Instagram because what happens with Instagram is that you're seeing 
people only put up pictures that are perfect. And, and that's with Facebook as well. If you look good, then you put that up. If you don't look, feel that you look good, you won't put it up. You don't really share it. So with any of the social media, they're all about looking good. But when they put other people put up their pictures of looking good, the thing, what if we are strong within yourself, then we would not compare ourselves to other people, yeah? We wouldn't compare ourselves to Instagram. We wouldn't compare ourselves to Snapchat. Let's compare ourselves to ourselves. If you're going to compare them, but okay, unnecessary honesty. Honest friends say you've gained weight. Okay, compare your body to theirs openly. All right, okay. Like, yeah, so basically you're not asking them, how do I look? Have I how do I look fat in this or have I gained weight? They're just they're just uninvitedly telling you you've gained weight. And they're telling you because they think they're being your friend. They think that they're give, they're being honest with you. And how does that make you feel? Have you ever spoken back to them? Have you ever like told them? Have you told them that? you know, I really don't like what you're saying to me or I'm un I've not asked for your opinion. Have you have you communicated? No, because it's not too nice. But why is it not too nice? OK, I don't know what the situation in that time is when your friends are saying it. Skin is a huge insecurity. I don't know what BC is. BC people? Because people, sorry, <laughs> because people will always tell you you're tired when you don't have makeup on. Hmm. And do you wear makeup all the time? And I suppose makeup is amazing in one way as well, because it does cover up if you are tired. You put a bit of concealer under your eyes and it does clear up um, imperfections, etc. But also sometimes it's a way of feeling good about yourself. Naturally, a lot of people don't need makeup. I have seen lots of gorgeous, beautiful girls. And sometimes I don't understand why they've got so much makeup on because they're actually stunning without it. They're stunning without it. But then that again shows about self-esteem or sometimes, you're, okay, fine, you put makeup on because you're going out. You're going out and it's, you know, a night out, you want to get dressed up. But you have to wear it daily. So we've got skin, you've got... um uh, do they comment on skin? Okay, they do, because they, they say you look tired when you don't have makeup on. I suppose it's something what they're used to. Okay, so skin and feeling overweight. Okay. However, see if you can become so confident in who you are that no one's opinion, no one's rejection or behaviour will be able to rock you rock you side to side you'll be firm you can you know wash it down like they say uh on a duck's back it wouldn't waver you does that make sense inshallah that is definitely the goal become so confident in who you are that no one's opinion or rejection or even behavior will rock you and that's the focus of you, this focus of they're all external. The comments that people make, the Instagrams, the social media, the billboards, the TV adverts, they're all external. But what's happening when you have the low self-esteem and body image issues, they're all coming internally. They're coming from your mind. So you have control over it. You are in control of that. We just have to learn how to overcome that. And you have the power. You have the power within you. And we just need to tap into it to connect you to it. So how can we do this? You don't have to have a perfect body to have a good body image. Do you? No. You don't have to have a perfect body 
and whatever perfect body means to you to have a good image body image when you like your body as it is right now right this very moment right now today that will boost your self-esteem when you like your body as it is right now that will boost your self-esteem so how are we going to do this self-awareness know yourself know your body be aware make a list of the things that what you like about yourself okay fine if your skin doesn't look so good but do you have gorgeous eyes um a nice lips what is it about yourself that you like what do you have what traits or what what things about you that are just so unique to you and are stunning and amazing and beautiful Please do put them in the comments when I, I, I say this. Um, I'm just looking to see if any. Do make a list of them for yourself, yeah? But tell me here too. And accept compliments. How good are, are we accepting compliments? Are you any good at it? When someone says, oh, you look great today. Oh, oh you look, um, never believe I'm <laughs> terrible. <laughs> That's not a good start, but that sh shows already about your self-esteem. Okay, so you never believe them. Why don't you believe them? If somebody's saying it, so somebody will say, oh, you look good in that dress. Oh, you look like you've lost weight. You will say, oh, no, no, it's just because it's black. I wore this today. It's just this top. Is this this shape? Or, um, no, it's just because of this. You make excuses. You start making excuses for even the compliments to not accepting the compliments. So when the positive influence is coming, don't push it away. Accept it. Own it. Say thank you. Just say thank you. And soak it in. You look great today. Thank you. Oh, wow, you look amazing. Oh, your eyes are so gorgeous. Thank you. Know and understand your qualities of what makes you good, who you are. You're not what the outer shell is. You're not the way, you're not the person just because of the way you look. True or false? You are the person that's within. And when that glows out of you, when you're strong and confident as that person from within, regardless of what size you are, whether you're size 20 or a size 10. That's what makes you who you are, your qualities, your other qualities of being kind, um, generous, um, always smiling or, you know, looking at good of people. These all start shining out of you. Your smile, your laughter, you know, making other people feel good. That's who you are as a person. And that's what makes you beautiful. Look at the beauty that is within you. And always focus on the positives of yourself. Some people don't like um, their upper body. Some people like the lower body. Some people say they've got, they, even if they're focusing on their tummy, but they've got great legs, then focus on your great legs. If you're focusing on, if you've got bingo wings, I've heard people going on about bingo wings, and I'm like, I didn't even notice that. I didn't even see it. I didn't even think about it. Just the person is, is giving the negative talk that's normally internal to them out loud to other people with something they've not even thought of. Other people are not even seeing. So rather than doing that, we do self-awareness of all the positive stuff about us. We do we rewire our brains. We rewire our brains from all the negative comments that you say to yourself, all the negative comments that you might get from other people, and start creating new ones, new positive ones. And from these new positive comments, then you create new neural pathways in your brain. And that makes a new connection for your subconscious mind. And then build on them build on them and that will start generating the ripple effect 
of the behavior and your thinking and your feeling and your behavior because it will start from the subconscious mind. Does that make sense? Rewire your brain by creating new positive pathways. Positive pathways. So start thinking about things that you can say about yourself. So it's like that first bit there, self-awareness. Make a list of what you like about yourself. And when you've made that list, I want you to start telling yourself about it. Telling yourself, oh, I do have great hips or I do have um, gorgeous eyes or I'm not even sure where to go with this one. <laughs> um, you know, whatever it is for you, I do have all the with the great things that you've got, even the great internal things that are not body body related. Say them to yourself. Say them out loud. Like they say, affirmations. Say them to the mirror. Tell your friends if you want. Let them know you actually love this about yourself. Then be kind to yourself. And that's a part of being kind, is actually giving yourself those positive messages. Don't rely on others. Don't rely on the family. Don't rely on your friends. Don't rely on the culture. Don't rely on Instagram. Rely on yourself to be kind to yourself. What makes you feel good? F makes you feel good to go into the cinema, makes you feel good going for a spa day, makes you feel good going for a bath, even simple things like moisturizer. If skin's not great, what can you do about it? Look at what practical things you can do. You can cleanse, tone, moisturizer, maybe eye creams, serums, whatever it is. Do something that's a routine and that routine makes you feel good. It's not the it's not the effect of the actual creams, it's about the procedure of it, what you're doing and you're stopping and taking care of you. So that's where it says self-care and self-love actions. Do things that make you feel good. Take a note, make a small list of things that make you feel good. It could be simple things, even if it's reading a book. What makes you feel good? Do them. Do more of them. And then lastly, I think you need to cleanse your environment. If social media is not any good for you, not good for your mind, not good for your mental health, your mental well-being, then maybe take a break from it. You know, take a small break or cut them out. Do what you need to do for you because you're the most important person. You are the most important person. If you can't be in a great place yourself, with yourself, you won't be able to help others. Maybe cleanse your environment of negative friends. If they're not any good for you, possibly consider moving away from them. If they're not, if they're making you feel worse about you, maybe they're not worth being around. Do they value you as an individual? Do they value you as a person? If they don't respect and value you, maybe they're not the ones that are right for you. I'm aware of time, but I'll try to speed it up a wee bit, okay? And spend time with people who make you feel good about you. So cleanse off the negativity and then inject the positive. And those people that are giving you the compliments, spend a wee bit more time with them. But also spend more time with just you, being you, writing a journal. Write stuff every day, that a gratitude journal. That's an amazing thing and it's really good. Um, not just the simple things of saying, I'm grateful for a house or food on the table. Alhamdulillah for body. You know, we've actually got two arms, two legs. We can walk. The basic things that sometimes we take for a, for granted. But actually, what are you grateful for? Maybe in a journal, just write every night three things you're grateful for and try to make them different, of course. And that's where you're spending time with you. And you can make yourself feel better. As, as soon as a negative thought comes into your mind, rather than letting it spiral and adding to it, and this whole spiral goes round and round and round and round and deeper and deeper and deeper because you keep adding to it, figure out how to stop it. Take it like a scissor. Just cut. Don't let it spiral down. Cut. Be aware of it. Cut. You can do that. I have taught many people when coaching and counselling and therapy to do these things so just try you can do it 
Lastly, be in positive environment where you feel where you are accepted for who you are. Now you know what that is for you because this is about you. You're all unique. Your positive environment might be completely different from what my positive environment is. But another thing is really great is being in nature. Being in nature, taking take your socks off a bare feet and being walking on the ground and really being grounded with nature and taking deep breaths, really slowing down and meditating as they call it. But meditating could be even, you know, you can do zikr, you can do your salah outside when the weather gets a bit better or even as long as it's dry. But that is incredible feeling when you put your head down for sujood on the earth, absolutely amazing. You're really connected with you. You're connected with your soul. You're connected with your purpose. What's your purpose on the earth here? What's your purpose of you, you as an individual? What is your purpose? And then you start feeling that strength and that energy through that ground coming right through your feet into your legs, up right over to your head and to your mind, especially when you put your head down. All of it's so connected and it's an amazing, amazing experience. It's something you need to really do. Try it out. So this section is for question and answers. Um, I'm not sure about time. Just now I know we're way over time because of we started late, but we do have, a, 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 I think, depends on what... Um, Five minutes, okay, fabulous, okay. Five minutes, we've got five minutes for question and answer section. So um, I've just put on, on the last slide. So please feel free to send your messages through with your questions. And um, But in the meantime, I have put on the screen here what the website is. So you can have a look at the different areas I work with. And the Facebook page, I think we've got the link with Fosis anyway, and um, it's Ash Coaching. And then I've put my email, and I've just noticed there's a typo in it because I did it so quickly. So Virgin Media, oh, I don't know if I can just change that just now while you're on there. Okay, how do you balance having body positivity and being healthy and fit? How do you balance body positivity? So I think you need to start from the beginning. Okay, what how, one of the things would be, how do you feel about your body? So with yourself, we had sometimes you're two, sometimes you're six, right? So that, like, you know, that's quite a big it's like sometimes you're feeling not too bad and then you dip to quite low. What is it that making you do that? What's happening? So we get the signal of it. What is it a trigger? Has somebody said something? Something you've seen? Is it something you've, you know, something's happened and you feel like you drop down to two? Okay. So when you get that core thing, then you work out from there. Um, being healthy and fit, I gather that would simply be being healthy would be looking at the way you eat, okay? Being healthy is about your routine. So either too much sugar is not good for you, not just because of uh, putting on weight and calories, also because it gives you that high, you get like the energy going straight up and then straight away you're going to feel the slump off it. So that's not very good for mental health either because you're feeling that drained uh, after it as well fit you need to see where you are in fitness how fit are you right now do you work out do you exercise at all do you go walking do you go to the gym um do, do you have a daily routine do you have a weekly routine do you do yoga what do you do just now so we have to really figure out where you are and then add on because it's, i don't do a generic message and generically you could find this anywhere you know, you can find it on Google or Instagrams. Being healthy is eat well, eat healthy, um, good salads, you know, portion sizes. Um, still have all your food groups of carbs, your veggies and your protein. 
and um, and then being fit. Of course, being fit, then it's about exercising. So go out and I would say, if you're going, don't make things as a task. When it's coming to fitness, do things that you enjoy. So do you like yoga? Go and do it. If you like running, go and do it. Or even a dance class. Have you been to dance classes? You know, um, there was a dance class and it was called Clubber Size. And I accidentally went to it and you had glow sticks and it was all dark. And oh my God, it was incredible. It was incredible because I didn't mean to go to it, but I had so much fun. It was so much fun. I didn't feel like I was exercising. And it is something I took on from that class as well, where I noticed that nobody cared how they looked because the lights were off. Nobody cared about somebody looking at them. Nobody even cared about if they were doing the moves right, if they were going the right direction or not. They end up, as long as they were moving and waving their arms um, and going to the music, they were having a great time. So they enjoyed it. And the people were coming back every week to that class. And that's what was helping them keep fit and feeling good about themselves. So you need to find things that you actually enjoy. Yes, you know, we do become human nature. We become impatient for waiting for results. But this is where maybe we look at what is the results? Are you looking for physical results? Are you looking for the results on the scales? Is that what you mean when waiting for results? Is it for how you feel in that pair of jeans? Because... Remember, your time of month changes um, how the genes are going to feel if you're bloated. Um, also, if you uh, when you've eaten something, do you, if you weigh yourself in the morning or you weigh yourself later, that might change the numbers on the scales. They are not really real results. So it depends what results you're actually meaning. I would suggest focus on the results of how you feel. How you feel. So when you go out for the exercise class, um, if there's a friend you can get joining in with you to do something with you, or even netball, you know, some sports, do something that you enjoy and you can have a laugh at. You, it feels fun because when you do that, it doesn't even feel like you're not waiting for results. You're not there for um, the, a number on the scale or fitting into by the next day or the next week fitting into that pair of jeans you're actually just enjoying yourself and when you're enjoying yourself and endorphins are releasing good serotonin levels in your body then you're going to feel good about yourself and that's going to bring your self-esteem right up i started the gym and after not seeing results for a month i gave up what were you doing at the gym first of all um, how often did you go? How was your eating when you're going to the gym? But actually, are you aware it's actually probably after the month that when you go to the gym that you start seeing the results? Because even though you need to know what results you're looking for, the results you might be looking for is um, you might be firmer, you might be more toned up, uh, that's still, the, or you might be building a bit of muscle. And because you're building muscle, it's not going to change on the scales. You, um, so you, there's lots of things when you need to see the results. There's not one magic answer here. But don't give up. That's where I'm getting here. If you don't see the results, you've got those expectations. So maybe take a step back of what your expectations are, what you're actually looking for. Don't give up on yourself. If you give up on yourself, how can we expect others not to give up on us? We can't give up on ourselves. You're, it's like that body has been given to us by Allah. That's your amanat. We're, we're here to look after it. And if a way to look after it is fitness and health, but the way you treat your body of how you feel about it, I gather that's our manat as well. How we feel about what Allah's given us. I don't know, it's just something to think about. However, the thing of gym, fitness, healthy, they're all external again, they're actions you can take. But before you take those actions and have them going on continued, you have to go back another step to go back it's like motivation when they say motivation where is the motivation coming from it's coming from the mind it's coming from internal so what will motivate you to go and look after your body what will motivate you to be healthy what will motivate you to sustain it so one thing you're saying is results but what if 
we change the results over for you. And I'm happy. I know this is this is very like as a a, a webinar is different when we are with one to one. Um, you know, maybe do a consultation and look at what's going on for you because it might be something completely different than what you think it is. And then doing a few sessions, whether it's the stress or the anxiety off about the body image and self-esteem, if we just get it, get that connection switched over from the right part, from the root cause, the rest will just fall into place. Then it's easy. And this is where, where we fail when we're looking for the external, when we're looking for the external results, when we're looking for the external approval of others. That's all external. If we can if we can sit down and look at ourselves and sit down and think about all the things we're grateful for, all our good points, all the wonderful things about us as a person, as an individual, that is our body image and that's our self-esteem then. And that will give you what level you're at. And that level isn't determined by anyone else. It's determined by you. And only you can change it. Only you are in control of this. So if anybody needs, if anybody's in a position, please seek help. Help isn't a bad thing. It's, it's not... I know sometimes it's a taboo about going for therapy. What if you need it, then get support. Go go to someone and get it from the root cause, and then life will be easier for you. Okay, Jazakala for that. I have just had um, a message come through, so if, if there isn't any other questions, um, I can tell you. Give, give, I've been asked to give a small description of the coaching and how it works, so if you're okay with that. So what packages I at, at, at the moment I do, so the areas I concentrate on, and you can have a look at the website for lots of areas I've worked with people. I mean, I've worked from children from the age of 10, you know, to um, the last gen I was working for, well, he was probably in his 60s, but they're all in different areas. But anxiety relief therapy, I do that. That's um, over two weeks. And we cleared the anxiety right from the root cause within that two weeks period. So it's a two hour session and another two hour session um, the week after. I have a life coaching program, which is a transformational life coaching program, which is on a 10 step program. And this 10 steps area covers everything. So like the things you're talking about just now, the physical things, the body image, the self-esteem, the eating, the emotional energy that you have there that you get drained with, the um, the energy you feel physically, all these areas are all covered. And we look at what, where are you going in life? So the coaching is very um, all about it's not performance coaching. It's all about coaching about how you where it, how you are about yourself. So it's all about self awareness. And when you learn about yourself, then you can take the relevant steps. So I become the facilitator um, to take you through that route, from take you to that path. And 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 why the program specialised is because we I add in all the counselling, the NLP, the hypnotherapy. It's a bespoke service depending on the client that's in front of me. The client that's come to see is all designed around them. So I don't do um, a program that's one fit for all because it's not the way it works. It's not the way it works. Um, the other thing I do is empowerment events. So recently I've had lots of empowerment events. I do monthly empowerment events so it's called that's for women it's women empowerment tribe meetups and it's on the last Thursday of every month um so the next one's the 25th of April and it's at the Glen Hill Hotel at 9 30 to 12 um and that's for everybody it's for any woman that's there and we do self-development workshops within it 
and it's a good networking element as well. You don't need to talk about your problems if you don't want to. Um, if somebody wants to discuss things, we can look at it. But it's all about networking and being in that environment, that positive environment. That's what I've created, a safe place for people to feel comfortable to be who they are and learn and learn how to be better with themselves, be empowered to be them, be a better version of you. OK, so that's the three areas I'm focused on. And obviously I do also I do the one to one sessions, too. But really, the packages are the best thing. So you can contact me on any of these, uh, the Facebook, you can follow the page, you can have a look at the website and email me on the website. There is a contact me page and you can complete it of what area that you want to look for help. And we'll do uh, we can do a 15 minute consultation free over the phone. And then we can arrange a meeting if you like. Is there any other questions before we close for today? And I want to say a big thank you um, to the team who've invited me along to do the webinar as it was my very first webinar. I've never done it before. I didn't even know how to work a webinar, but Alhamdulillah, we got there and um, and it's a very interesting topic. And it's no, there's nothing right or wrong. It's really how people feel about it themselves.